Hello, welcome back to Biblical Perspectives. Frank, we are in episode seven. Unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. What people may not realize, although I hope they do, because otherwise they'll just think we wear the same clothes all the time. We record all of these in a day. So our minds are full of all these topics and and they, they bleed over into each other. And, and earlier we already talked about... Um, uh, gifts in some way. And we've touched on unity in some way and the, how those two things are connected. And to, and this lesson, in this episode, I should say, we're going to get deeper into that connection between unity and the gifts that God has put in the church. And and I want to read this, this, this fable from Aesop that I think mm-hmm. is a good little fable. It's called The Belly and the Feet. The belly and the feet were arguing about their importance. And the, when the, and when the feet kept saying that they were so much stronger that they even carried the stomach around, the stomach replied, but my good friends, if I didn't take in food, you wouldn't be able to carry anything. This idea that, that both are needed. Um, you can't have the one without the other. Earlier we were talking about in this room, we were talking about the tripods and how, how expensive tripods are to carry they're the thing that carries the thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you didn't have the tripod, then could you actually use the thing properly, right? Mm-hmm. The camera properly. Mm-hmm. So so everything, there's this all around us on earth, in, in, in technology, we see the need for coexistence of things. And that's the same in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. And the specific purpose for this, the Bible talks about is... Um, the unity. Hmm. So, Frank, let's talk about this. Let's unpack this. How, how unity and gifts are connected, our, our oneness in Christ. Maybe start with unity, um, and and some of what Paul teaches us in the Book of Ephesians on this idea of unity. Yeah. Have you ever have you Chan, Have you ever thought about why unity is is um, is mentioned so often in the New Testament? Why unity is something to be. Um, Sought constantly. Sought constantly. I mean, I guess it's because we struggle so much with it. <laughs> yes. I think uh, the reason why Paul points out the unity is because diversity is a given. Plurality is a given. Mm. We are not, you know, everyone looks after himself. Uh, we human beings by nature would not unite. We're individualistic by nature. Yes. So in the Bible, the diversity and the plurality in life and in cultures and in human beings is a given. Mm-hmm. But the goal is to strive for unity. Mm-hmm. Now, it is interesting if we read in chapter 4, uh, Paul in his, I, I would say, pastoral you know, tone, yeah. but yet he uses a strong word. He says... I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Now, he doesn't say, I kindly ask. Yeah, yeah. Urge is a, is a stronger word. It's so demonstrative. For him, for him, this is significant. For him, this is important. Mm-hmm. This is not just a maybe. This is not just a you ought. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he urges the believers. Now, keep in mind what we said. He does this with tears in his eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was way back. It's in not the, just, I urge you. That was way back in, I think, the very first episode. Yes, yes tears. Yes. With tears. So that, to me, gives the urge, the the, the urgency, uh, the proper perspective and context. Yeah, yeah. And he says, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. Now, God called different people. He calls Gentiles. He calls the Jews. He doesn't care where you come from. He calls sinners. Yep. And if we remember that, it makes us humble. I think it 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 reminds us that we need to be gentle with each other. Mm-hmm. And we need to be patient with each other. And uh, that we need to be bearing one another in love. And then... He says, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit the, in the bond of peace. There's another intense word, because, I mean, you said it gently, but he starts with, I urge you, and then he says, be eager to maintain. He could have just said, he could have just said uh, in, that, in that verse, with patience, bearing one, with one another in love, the unity of the Spirit. But he said, 
be eager to maintain the unity. So there's another strong word, eager. So what, what in your opinion, is, is, is uh, intended with that eagerness? Uh, that that it should be that it should be a focus and a priority of our pursuit. That that there should be an earnestness, there should be an intentionality uh, to maintain uh, the unity of the spirit. And why is that unity important? Well, like you said, it, it counters our our natural nature, which is to be individualistic or to be selfish. Hmm. Unity contrasts that selfishness. Hmm. Also, I think though, unity is, uh, and we're going to see here in just a second, there is a oneness in the Godhead, right? Mm -hmm. And and thus that oneness is to be translated into all aspects of the church. This I like that, idea yes. of one. Yeah. So there should be an eagerness for us to model in the church what is modeled in the, the Godhead, in, the, mm. in, the, in our creator. And... And that oneness in the Godhead really is also a oneness in the faith. Yeah. And that's what, what he describes here. There's one body, church. Yep. There's one spirit. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. It matters of faith. Yeah. It matters of things that pertain to God. Mm -hmm. there, there needs to be unity. But in matters of service. Mm -hmm. In matters of reaching out to others, yeah. In matters of gifts and talents, mm -hmm. there can be a variety of different things. Yeah. So, uh, in faith, baptism, faith, uh, God, there is there is unity. <laughs> there is a oneness. There, we don't follow a plurality of different gods. Yeah. We don't follow many gods. We don't uh, we don't have uh, competing faiths uh, that are uh, excluding each other, but there is one faith, one God, one baptism. And, and can I say something about this real quick? Just this one, this one faith, one baptism, one God. W what we're talking about here is when you say we don't have, we know societally we have many faiths, many ideas about all yes, things. Yes, what, yes. What we're saying is that we believe that the Bible yes. teaches that there's one faith, and that is a faith in Christ Yes, that is given to us yes. in Christ, right? Like, and Christ is the unifying And principle. Christ is the unifying, that there's one baptism, and that baptism is, I am baptized by immersion in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Like, there's, there's one baptism. That's what we're talking about in that exactly. regard. Exactly. Not that we don't recognize that there's these things societally, because yes. there's all kinds of other things. Yes, but, but yes. So there's not all, it's not all one and, hey, your one is the same as my one. No, no, no. no, no. There's one is defined by the Bible. The Bible's one yes. is the one we're speaking yeah. of. And that's what we're to be one in. We're to be united in this faith, in not this baptism, in this hope, in this Lord, um, into this calling, right? Into this Holy Spirit. You know, even in our faith background or faith background, we know there's some that are on the fringes that want to say, well, there's not really a Holy Spirit, you know? Yeah. And and we would say, no, no, there's there's one Spirit. Yes. There's yes. one Lord. There's yes. one. Yes. So, all right, continuing on, go from there. So so from there, he moves then to the church. Yeah. And and he says, let's, let's go to verse 11. Okay. He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. Why? To, so this is a variety. Yeah. This is not he 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 could have given just apostles or just teachers or just evangelists. But no, he has given a variety of different ministries and different gifts to people in the church to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of yep, faith yep. and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Now, uh, so again, you have the different offices and gifts that God gives to the church and the unity of faith. Yeah. And they help to build the church so that we are mature, he says, in the fullness of Christ, a mature manhood. Yeah. We are no longer children. We are no longer tossed 
to and fro by the waves carried about by every wind of doctrine. Can can I can I just touch on that real yes. quick? So one thing I would say is is the temptation could be, well, if I'm not a pastor or apostle or teacher or evangelist or whatever it may be, that then I'm not that that I'm I don't have that gift or I don't I don't need to worry about this. But the point is is that those people are giving gifts to equip the people for the ministry and the ministry is just as much uh helping the people to attain the unity. Mm-hmm. So it's, and maturity. Yeah, and maturity. Uh cuz it's when it's when the people that are using those gifts to train and equip are are doing so and it's when the people are then trained and equipped and doing the ministry that at that point we grow into all maturity and faith. So it's not just, oh, well, the pastor needs to do his job because that's why we're not united. No, maybe it's that like also you as the church member need to do your job in your work of ministry also, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, and the people to whom he talks most likely were not uh, established pastors or paid church workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were... Lay members, they were normal church members. In other words, someone that is not paid by the denomination, Frank, could be equipped with or be blessed with the gift of being a, a teacher or a pastor or, or evangelist. Or evangelist. And maybe even more effective. Maybe even more. Sometimes a, a paid person brings a certain distance yep. uh, with him or her. And, and, and if if the other people see that you are just one of them, yep. they might be much more open to listen to you than to a paid uh, clergy. The best evangelist, one of the best evangelists in my church back in California was a doctor by the name of Dr. Doug Cook. And uh, Doug um, would just tell his patients, he, had, he was a surgeon actually, but he'd say to his patients, hey, I have a Bible study on Saturday mornings uh, before I go to church, because that's when he goes to church. If you want to come to that Bible study, and he would do that Bible study, and then over time he'd say, "Oh, by the way, now I'm going over to my church. If you want to come and join me, or next week, if any of you want to join me." So he'd do these Bible studies, and then he would, and we probably baptize four or five people mm-hmm. from that, maybe even a couple more actually. Now that I think about it, of uh, just patients that, uh, that had been patients of his, and then just stayed in relationship, kept coming to that Saturday morning study, and then he'd say, "Oh, by the way, I'm going to church now. If you want to come with me." So he'd do this Bible study before church start, which was like a huge sacrifice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there was this connection. There was this relationship. He wasn't the pastor, but he was definitely their teacher. He was definitely shepherding them. And and there was a relational element of trust that probably I could have never gotten if I showed up and knocked on their door and said, yes. hey, trust me, study the Bible with me. But because literally he had done surgery on them and because he would invite them in their post-op follow-up, not... Not to give them pressure before, but... but And the beauty is that... That they would trust him. Yes. And, and the beauty is you don't have to expect to do everything yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, not everyone has the gift of evangelism. Yeah. Not everyone has the gift to lead another person to a decision. Yeah. But everyone has the uh, the call to share his faith or yeah. her faith. And... Uh, so if 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 I'm a teacher, you know, I might be able to explain things from the Bible in plain language that people understand. And others in the church are there and they talk with a person and lead that person to a decision. And and others uh, encourage a person or I have the gift of hospitality that Paul mentions yeah. in other contexts. And uh, I might not be the speaker, but I uh, can provide a house setting where we invite people yeah. so that they feel comfortable and at home and open up uh, with their questions and and are willing to, to listen to things that they've never heard before. The, this, this maturity comes back, brings us back to unity, though, in some ways I see, because it says, to the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves carried and by every wind of doctrine. In other words, this idea is that when we're united in our, when when we used our gifts and in service and ministry and we've matured in faith, we'll also be united in doctrine. We'll be united in in uh, avoiding the deceptions of uh, and the deceitful schemes of of Satan. Right? Doesn't yes. 
And I think there needs to be a, a certain uh, unity in, in, in doctrine, in teaching. If that were not the case, yep. everyone can say whatever he pleases. And here you see also that we are called in verse 15 to speak the truth yep. in love. So there is truth, yeah. uh, biblically speaking. Yes, truth does exist. Yeah. And uh, we have to share it, but we have to share it in the right spirit so that we grow up uh, in every way to him who is it, the head of the, the church. But the structure of the text almost is like Paul saying, okay, here's where we're one in. We're one in Christ and the baptism and all these things. But 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 now there's a diversity of gifts and those gifts are all for the purpose of actually making us one. And then when we operate as one, we're teaching truth, we're united in doctrine. So there's like this this... This, this relationship that goes back and forth between the two. Mm-hmm. Do this, so now we're working together, mm-hmm. and we grow in maturity, now we're even more together. Because it says again here, uh, from whom the whole body joined and held together yes. by every bo- joint which is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in mm-hmm. love. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a combination. There's a combination of that diversity in that, which is the working, and building up, and equipping. But then there's a combination, which is also the unity, which is the idea, the words of body and joined and held together, and uh, and and growing in love. Yeah, and that truth, you know, here here it really. Um it achieves the unity because Jesus Christ is the head. Uh, he is called the head uh, of the body. And in uh, verse um, 21, he says the truth as it is in Jesus. Mm-hmm. So um, he is the one who unites us. He is the one who who uh, equips us. He is the one who um, who redeems us. So he is really the source and the fountain and the goal of our truth and the unity that we seek to to achieve in in our fellowship with him. Yeah. This is a rebuke though I think though too to me t- as a pastor because it's saying it's reminding me that if there's a lack of maturity it might be somewhat about my lack of training and equipping people to do the work of ministry. Now I'm not going to take all the blame but I'm saying that that I think that there's an aspect where we as pastors can 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 point out well the members should be doing this or that but but we need to remember that that it begins we're going to look at later where we talk about mm-hmm. the husbands mm-hmm. and the wives right mm-hmm. and it says husbands you know it says wives submit your husbands you know as as Christ submits to the or as as the church submits to Christ but husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. And we know that Christ loved the church before ever the church submits. It's the same idea that like, if we're wanting unity and we're wanting the people to be in ministry, then it begins with us training and equipping. Yeah. You know, there's this, there's this initiation of unity that comes. Yeah, it, not, not just uh, with us in training and equipping, but in us receiving God's grace and forgiveness mm-hmm. and being willing to learn from him. And in that sense, he really remains the one to whom we look up to, yeah. the one that we want to follow and the one that we want to emulate. And that we point to in all things. Yes. Frank, I want you to be equipped <laughs> to do whatever you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. no, but I think I think this is important because I think that we need to accept that like it's okay to be have different gifts, have different ministries, have different roles. But everybody needs to be playing a role in the unity. Maybe too, Frank, that it would we our churches would be stronger if we or maybe more people would serve if we taught them the true purpose. Because I think sometimes this is also where we go wrong. That we teach them to serve simply for the sake of serving. Hmm. And we don't Not remind them. Huh? Not for equipping, you mean? Well, we we teach people to serve simply for like so so I'll make an appeal. We need help with more greeters, or we need help with whatever. And we don't ever help them to understand the theological aspect of it, that that the importance of this is because by you doing that, you are actually building us up into the unity of Christ. Mm. Like, you may not believe it, but you serving in this role of being hospitable when someone comes in the church Mm -hmm. is maturing you 
and maturing our church to live in the fullness of God's love. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, rather than just me saying like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need someone on the yeah, door. Yeah. Can you please be on the door. Yeah. So there's a deeper rationale. There's a deeper understanding. There's a deeper purpose to yes. to everything yes. that's happening. Yes. yes. Which is really true. There is. I mean, this is what this is texting us, t- telling us mm-hmm. is that when the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, that means everyone's doing what they've been trained and equipped to do. When each part is working, again, serving, doing the ministry, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that suddenly makes being in a door opening a door for someone absolutely a whole different experience it makes it makes collecting the offering or 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 preparing the fellowship meal yeah a whole different experience so something to think about anything else you want to say about this just 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 a little detail yes in verse 11 you know where he lists the apostles and prophets and yeah yeah yes and then he says the shepherds and teachers, and actually the word for shepherd is the the word for pastor. pastor yeah. And the way this is constructed in the Greek in the New Testament, the shepherds and teachers are the same. So they are not two distinct uh, groups of people, but the shepherds are also the ones who teach. Okay. And the teachers are the ones who also have a pastoral responsibility for the st- the people they teach. And I think that's uh, that's nice and significant because it it gives perspective to the work of the pastor. Mm-hmm. Because as a pastor, you, uh, you, you're not just preaching, but you're also teaching mm-hmm. people things. And as a teacher, you also must see the person, even the student in the classroom, yeah with a pastoral heart and uh, perspective, because if you just want to uh, instill head knowledge, head knowledge, it will not reach the heart. Yeah. And uh, so the pastor and teacher is, is a wonderful combination, I think. I, so, so literally that's what the Greek says. It yeah. combines us to that pastor teacher. So that person, so there's the evangelist, there's the, what is this, is there? The prophet and the apostle. The prophet and the apostle. And then there's the teacher, the teacher pastor. So it almost, so it'd be like, it almost, we could put a hyphen in there. Yes. 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 The teacher pastor. That's interesting to me. I I thank you. See, that's something I didn't know. And I appreciate you drawing that out. Now, isn't, don't we, don't we get our word for pastor? uh, Don't we get our word for elder also from pastor? It's interchangeable. Well, elder different. Well, elder is uh, there. I think overseer. Yes. There, there is a, a different word, but, but, Elders also had a pastoral function in the church because, in you know, when it talks about when yes. it talks about elders, it said be be shepherds of the yes, flock that comes yes, yes. amongst you. Sometimes it's used synonymous, and you know, and you have sometimes I know I know elders that'll be like, oh, I don't visit, I just like I like to teach or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But really, it, you're saying that these things are the shepherd and teacher seem to go together. I, I that's what he says. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> and that's what Paul says. So let's <laughs> let's dress the fossil. <laughs> I love how you did that. Yeah. That's what he says. I mean, you could argue with me, but that's how, that's how the boss says it. Anyways, I appreciate that, Frank. That's good stuff. We are uh, done with episode number seven. We're going to be back next week with episode number eight. We hope that you are being blessed in these studies. Uh, please leave your comments below in the comments section for YouTube. Hit the thumbs up if you've been blessed. Uh, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any videos. By the way, I want to tell you that every Saturday we have new videos also of sermons and music and all kinds of things. And so you can watch those also. And we hope that you will uh, go back and, and check out some of those things. But we're glad to have you with us each week. May God bless you wherever you may be. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.